Hey guys, welcome back to another um, outdoor video. So, I have to sneeze. <coughs> okay. So, welcome back to another outdoor video. Um, so, this is a new doll that I have up for grabs in my shop. It is a giant ant eater, um, small version. Uh, it is a art doll for taxidermy piece. Um, head is made from polymer clay sculpted with glass eyes that I hand painted. Uh, also the feet are polymer clay and painted and faux fur. The fur has been like these little patterns have been um, done with fabric paints um, and yeah fully posable with a ball and socket armature. So this one is available in my shop at creaturejournet.com and payment plans are also welcome so um just shoot me a message and i can tell you how they work pretty flexible with everything there um so it gets super posable uh, head is also posable legs posable um really good holding poses too so if you want to know how i made him then just stay tuned okay so i'm starting off by painting up some glass eyes now i use glass cabochons for all of my eyes these days and I also use some acrylic paint to paint up the eyes. I also have pre-made pre -made ones as well, but my majority of the time I made, um, I make my own eyes. So I'm just doing in the little pupil to begin with. And these are really, really small eyes because this doll is going to be quite small. And then I'm leaving the pupil to dry for at least a couple of hours. And then I can go in with a brown and just basically paint over the top of it uh, to create the iris. And then I'm going to leave that to dry overnight before I use it in any clay. So for the armature of the head, I'm using a little bit of aluminium foil, which I have sort of um, crushed into a rough shape of the head. This will sort of act as like the skull. And then I'm going to be using some Sculpey Original for majority of this um, doll. And Sculpey Original is the softer Sculpey. Sculpey. I like to work with soft clays, uh, but you can get harder Sculpeys like Super Sculpey or Fimo. And that's just a little bit harder to work with but i like to work with soft ones so i always go for the sculpey original uh, and i'm basically just covering the aluminium foil with um, like a layer of the polymer clay and then i can roughly shape it into the shape that i want and once i'm happy with that i can start adding all the little details so an ant eater is um, a little bit different from anything i've sculpted before so it obviously has a really long snout um, and uh, just a completely different look for <laughs> any animal that I've made before. And I'm basically just building up the shape and comparing it to some reference images I have on my computer next to me. The reference images I have at different angles so I can check that everything is looking right and um, symmetrical. And then I can start working on all of the detailing. So I'm starting off with the lower jaw piece and it's quite a flat little piece of the um, like the lip area is quite flat so I just um, press out a little flat bit of clay and stick it on and just sort of um, work it into the head that I have then I can start working on the upper sort of snout area and the nose uh, I always sort of do that um, with adding the lower jaw first and then working on the upper snout area and then the nose and then the eyes and then um, just refining everything once all of those pieces are on So once I'm happy with the, the rough shape of the nose, I can start adding the eyes. So normally for the eyes, I make like a little eye socket with uh, small bits of clay just to create a sort of raised surface bit so that I can put the cabochon on and it sort of pushes the eyes up a little bit and um, instead of it being flat against the head, um, and yeah, it just basically creates like a little eye socket. So once I put that on, I can uh, put 
the cabochons on and make sure they're nice and symmetrical and that they are sitting the same direction otherwise you're going to have like a weird wonky looking face uh, so you want to look at it from all different angles and make sure that um, your cabochons are sitting symmetrically and once you're happy with that uh, i then start adding the eyelids so i basically do that with some rolled out pieces of clay and uh, just putting it over the top and the bottom of the eyes and then you can really achieve different sort of looks by just move, maneuvering and um, just playing with the worms that you put on the eyelids so you can create different looks for um, uh, and sort of different emotions just by small tiny little changes Then I'm just adding a couple of more bits on top of the eyes just for some uh, more details because they have a little bit more detailing around the eyelids and a little bit more sort of wrinkling. So I'm just adding a, another bit of snake clay around both the eyelids and I'll be working it into the rest of the head as well. For the ears I've just rolled out two bits of clay roughly the same size and flattened it out and just basically made like a little ear shape and curled it around on the bottom so I can add it to the sides of the head. Uh, you always want to make sure these are symmetrical as well because then you'll have a sort of lopsided head uh, so I always sort of do, do them out of the same size bits of clay so I know that's the same amount of clay that I've been using but I mean they'll turn out a little bit different it's kind of inevitable um, but I always try to make them at the same time so I can make them look as symmetrical as possible and then when placing it on the head I make sure I'm lining it up uh, where the other piece is lined up on the other side again to make it symmetrical. For the claws, I'm just roughly doing some claws uh, to begin with and then I'm going to pre-bake these before I start adding it to the feet. Um, I had a different plan with the feet for this one. I wasn't going to do clay at the end of it. I was just going to do um, just plain faux fur and polyfill, but I decided differently. But you'll see that more in the, in, um, down in the video. So for the armature, I'm using a 1 8 scale ball and socket armature. This is my smallest armature because it is a small doll and I am starting to wrap it in some pipe cleaners and this sort of acts as a little catch for when I start needle felting the body. So I use polyfill to needle felt the body and it's basically like cushion stuffing and it works really, really well to needle felt things, especially if you're not using um, the needle felting for the actual body. Uh, you normally use alpaca needle, fel needle felting fiber uh, but I find this works really really well for just doing a plain body and it's so much cheaper um, than buying fiber to begin with um, and I'm just using a single needle felting tool and then go around and basically creating like a muscle tone before I start adding the faux fur which will be like the skin so you sort of got to act as like um, the skull and the, the, the muscle tone and then the skin so the anatomy of the animal is really important to actually look like the animal. So 
So I decided to go for some epoxy sculpt feet and then I'm going to be adding the claws in uh, once this has dried. So this is air dried, it's two part epoxy that you mix together and then basically leave it overnight to dry um, and harden and it hardens really really hard so it's quite hard to break. Um, and this is great for things that need a little bit of tension or if you um, are prone to dropping things because polymer clay can be fr fragile sometimes. Um, so I'm just basically sculpting the feet onto the, into the ball and socket armature and then um, I'm going to be adding the nails um, after it's dried with some super glue. So I'm just mapping out some um, little location keys that I can super glue the nails in and then I'm going to go over it again um, and just finalize all of the feet and make sure um, that they're looking like the feet. The good thing about using epoxy sculpt is you can smooth it out with just water and it becomes really really smooth um, but you do have a limited amount of time to work with it so you've got about half an hour um, if it's warmer you'll have a little bit less because um, it, it the warmer weather tends to make it go hard um, a lot quicker and what was i don't know these ants <laughs> on the table um so just ignore the ants so uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this to dry overnight once I've sculpted all of these pieces and then come back and glue the nails on. Okay, so I'm using some super glue called Loctite and this one's quite good. Um, it adheres polymer clays together really well and obviously epoxy sculpt. Just need to hold it there for a little bit so I'm just using some tweezers to hold it there um, and then it basically sets really quickly once it takes hold um, and yeah then I can start finishing off the body. So I'm just doing a tiny bit of needle felting around the legs just to bulk it out a little bit and get rid of those little ball and socket uh, lines so they don't show through on the faux fur um, and that way once that's done I can start adding the faux fur on top of the muscle tone. I'm going to do some initial painting before I add the faux fur. So I'm just painting around the eyes uh, in black and then I'm going to go over with a sort of a beigey colour that I've just mixed up into a colour to match the faux fur. Uh, and also the feet I'm going to be painting black as well and I'm going to be adding some uh, faux fur to the parts of the head because they're 
the head has a little bit of skin showing through towards the snout so i'm going to put the faux fur down that far just a little bit on top of the head and just to blend it into the rest of the body um, i'm using water-based acrylic paint uh, ones by chrome acryl um, but you can find any water-based acrylic paints in your local craft stores they're not expensive and they work really well uh, especially if you're adding some faux fur over the top of it you don't need to go overboard with your acrylic paints And this is the faux fur that I'm going to be using. It's a really, really nice long piled faux fur with like these black sort of patterns in it. And it makes it look very, very similar to a giant ant eater's fur. I'll just need to add some different colors towards the end once the dolls have sewn up. So basically start off with the torso piece first. And I'm just cutting around the legs and pinning it together so I can sew it all up. So basically sew like a zipper line down the middle. Um, go ahead and sew the legs on the neck area and the tail area and it's important to use a good quality thread um, because you need that tension to pull on the thread to close up all of the seam lines and um, I use good I, I use Gutemann thread because uh, it's quite good quality or I use upholstery thread I'm not going to show too much sewing because it's um, not fun. Um, so once it's all sewn up, I can start gluing everything together. So I use tacky fabric glue to glue all the faux fur to my resin polymer clay epoxy pieces. Um, and this is something from my local store called Spotlight. Uh, and it's just a like a tacky clear glue that's used for fabric fabrics. It works really well um, to adhere these. You can pull it apart if you need to, but it's quite strong. I've used this since I've started making art dolls for a long time um, and yeah I find it works really well so I'm going to add a little bit of faux fur to the head and once that's done I give it a little bit of a trim and I can start um, applying all the patterns I was sort of tossing and turning if I wanted to do the patterns in uh, a separate faux fur but I thought it might be too thick um, and it just wouldn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to so I opted for using some fabric paint to create the patterns on the neck area um, and then I'm going to comb it out whilst it's still wet so it doesn't stick together and become like a clump of paint basically so I use paints um, by Jacquard. I have these paints in my shop, creaturesinat.com, if you're interested in using some fabric paints. Uh, so check that out. I have a couple of different colors. There's not a whole lot of stock there, but there are some. Uh, and it's the same paint that I use to create these um, patterns. And I opted to do it with um, brushwork over an airbrush because I wanted to get a really sharp line not that you can't get it with an airbrush um, and I also couldn't be bothered pulling out my airbrush and compressor so um, the brushes work totally fine uh, I don't really have a problem with it it just takes a little bit longer than with an airbrush um, but you can achieve a pretty sharp line um, because the little white lines on that giant ant eater are quite small so 
um, yeah, I opted to just stick with the brush method. So again, you just want to make sure you're going to brush this out while it's drying so it doesn't clump together. But that is pretty much it for this doll. Um, it is available in my shop, crescentnet.com. Payment plans are welcome. So just shoot me a message and I can tell you how they work. Uh, I'm pretty flexible with all of that. So yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps my channel grow. Uh, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, I always have early access to my patrons for my dolls. So check that out if you want to snap up something before I release it in my public shop. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at Creatures of Nat and my shop, creaturesofnat.com. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.